they will come members, they can be free they are supposed to start at 3. We gave them 5 more minutes, but I think we have to start. Uh, we want to welcome you to the Department of Physics. This is the Physics Picture Theatre. And our presenter today will be Benon Fred Kinamasko. He is one of the experts in space physics in the department. And he'll talk about the hybrid solar eclipse that is due to happen on Sunday at around 5 degrees. So, Mr. Benon Kinamasko can take on the floor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Head. But this is all about physics. Uh, so I will go to the next slide. And basically, the, uh, the physics behind protects all of the science behind protects about the, uh, the three balls, which is the sun, the moon, and the earth. And uh, these three balls, their movement is the one which gives us an understanding about uh, the eclipse. But let's uh, go to the continents. So I guess the people who are here, we can uh, basically start uh, completely. I thought I would find uh, people already covering the whole place. But nevertheless, it comes as well as it balls. So we shall get an introduction of how these balls interact. And then uh, we shall look at the solar system and its dynamics. And then uh, look at the solar eclipse geometry. And then look at the total solar eclipse and the path of the totality. And then look at the hybrid solar eclipse. Then look at the uh, hybrid eclipse. Is it genetically modified eclipse or is it because of some other reason? The next part will be the solar eclipse frequency and if there are any other future eclipses and also that would uh, entail why this is a phenomenal uh, event that has brought people from near and far. The other part would be how can you do it safely without spoiling because the, uh, this lecture came into existence because of one senior member of staff inquiring whether we are safe and the like. So I will end with the uh, the types of viewing simply this eclipse. So let's look at uh, how these balls interact. Planets like Earth, which uh, we live on or which we survive on, they revolve around the Sun as they are focused. And that is uh, part of gravitation. Those of you who did uh, physics in air level, uh, and you did gravitation, you were taught that all planets rotate around the sun as a focus and uh, they make what we call an ellipse whereby at one end they are longer and another end the path is shorter. The earth rotates about its axis. This game we used to play in primary where they say continue and then eventually you start staggering around. The earth does it for one revolution, we get the 24 hours. That is a day. Uh, one side when it is facing the sun, the side facing the sun is day, whereas that side which won't be facing the sun, people will be in the night. So America now is in the night. Here we are turning to the evening. So that's what amounts to a day and night after the 24 hours of complete revolution for the earth rotating about its axis. The Earth revolves around the Sun also, and it does so to complete a year. So when it goes one revolution around uh, the Sun, we say about 365 and uh, 366 uh, uh, for leap year, if you remember, one of the, of the years after some time becomes a leap year. But then also this amounts to seasons like winter in the north and summer, uh, in the north, uh, north coast, and somehow in South Africa, they also have the summer and the winter. The moon is another ball. So the moon also revolves around the earth. And one complete revolution of the moon is actually the moon. In the vernacular, it is the moon. So the month in the vernacular, normally, if you were to make it a direct translation, it is the month is sometimes called the moon, like in my language. 
or if I can invoke Uganda or Mwes, which is similar for the moon we see and the month as a, a common number here. So this is the solar system. This is what I've been talking about. We have the sun, uh, then we have the earth here, and this red part here is the axis on which the earth rotates. Then we got the moon, which rotates around the earth, and it keeps doing so as the earth is going around all over to make a year. And each of the times of this moon makes one complete revolution to make a month. But we can view it uh, systematically by using this animation, whereby we see that uh, the sun is here as the center of focus, and then you have the earth. If you are to watch keenly the uh, patches of, on the earth, which is a graphical patch, is uh, also turning because of the spinning of the 24 hours. Whereas the uh, moon is also rotating around the earth, and it does so around the equator. So that's why the total eclipse and uh, the annual eclipse, when the two combined being the hybrid eclipse, are taking place around the equator. So now we basically know how the moon, the earth, and the sun interact in our solar system. So we can now go to the, uh, the phases of the moon. We always have the new moon. The moon is always round, but the side where the, the sun rays are reflected from is what makes it either shiny and depending on how it is oriented in the solar system. If you if I can take you back to this part. As it is, as you can see, whenever it reaches some point around here where the sun cannot reach it, it becomes blackish. So we say there is no moon. And then when it starts coming around, it just shines on a little bit of it, and then we get a new moon. Then it keeps now being shown on the bigger part, it becomes a half moon, full moon, and eventually it becomes almost half moon in the morning when it is going to be a new moon in the evening. So this is just to show you how the rays go from the sun, you know, and this is seen from the top of the solar system you were to look at it uh, from above. And uh, if, you that, uh, if you did that, this cartoon will be able to show you the different, uh, the different uh, this is the waning of the moon, and this is the waxing of the moon, and this is how the moon keeps going and having these phases of the moon at each of the points. And as you can see, the earth is not a, a ball which is seated upright. For physics, when you talk of the magnetic north, it is a little bit uh, inclined away from the geographical north, uh, what you call the angle of inclination in the second grade, especially around uh, senior four in physics, magnetic. So we now know how the uh, balls interact. They do it, God gave us the chance, they will do it forever. We shall only leave them doing it and go to our ancestors. But uh, when, what happens so that we get what we call an eclipse? <coughs> so we have two types of eclipses, a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. For this presentation, I'll you know, concentrate more on the solar eclipse uh, because that's, as you can see, or as you will see in front, it is the one which is more, <coughs> more important. So there has not been a confusion about which one gets where, as you saw when they were rotated. You wonder at one point, which, because at one point, uh, if I can involve the diagram again, at one point, yes, the moon gets in between, but as the moon also gets on this other side, the earth is the one which is between the, the moon and the sun. Now when the moon is the one which is in between, I can't pause it, but if I just took it like here, and the moon is in between, and it casts a shadow on the earth, we get what we call a solar eclipse, because the moon has shadowed the sun, and the shadow has been cast on the earth. Now, at the other point, where the moon is somewhere on this farthest point, like around here, 
and the interior of the earth, you see between the sun and the, the, the moon. So the earth is in between the moon and the sun. Then we get what we call the lunar eclipse. And that lunar eclipse is because it is now the earth which is casting the shadow on the moon. The difference is that the uh, solar eclipse happens when you have a new moon. Whereas when you are to get a lunar eclipse, your moon has to be full so that you are able to see a shadow of the earth cast on the moon. Uh, <coughs> So I will uh, just run quickly as well, come back, uh, this is where we are. But when people are asking questions and I'm trying to answer, I will invoke some slides which will help you on uh, getting what part of what we are going see. So we, we found us trying to understand what makes an eclipse lunar or solar, depending on which body is in between which. So eclipses are named for the body that is being darkened by the shadow. If the earth is the one which is being darkened, it means we are talking of the solar eclipse. If the, uh, the moon is the one which is being shadowed, then we talk of the lunar eclipse. So if you have a solar eclipse, the earth is covered by a shadow cast on it by the moon, being that the moon will be between the earth and the sun. The other one is the lunar eclipse. The moon will be covered by a shadow. And I think on uh, October 18 and 19, we had the penumbra. Penumbra means that if you were to stand on the outside and it is not so bright, you get almost two shadows. You get a stronger shadow, but in the outskirts of your shadow, you see some other patch. That small patch is called penumbra, whereas the dark shadow is the umbra. So the last uh, occurrence of the eclipse of the moon, which is lunar eclipse, actually lunar means moon in the moon, and uh, sol, if you remove ar, it means the sun. So a solar eclipse occurs when the new moon comes between the earth, and as you realize, not long ago we had a full moon, a very bright one. And in the morning, if you were, if you were to be keen these days, until Sunday, the moon and the sun are neck to neck. They are near each other. And actually, when you look at the moon, yes, it is new, because the, the part which is being shown uh, by light is just a patch of it, because of where we are and where the sun is is coming from. So these are our two eclipses. An eclipse where the moon is near enough to the earth to cause a strong shadow, which is called umbra. And that's why we could only have a shadow stretching from the uh, Atlantic Ocean in the Bermuda uh, to, the, uh, to the Gabon on the west coast of Africa to the Congo president, to the Democratic Republic of Congo, then to Bakwashi, Kuru, and stretches to the Turkana part, some part of the Ethiopia, and then we say it will disappear into Somalia, but actually it will be coming to the evening, so darkness will be prevailing, and you won't be seeing anything uh, to do with the interaction between uh, the sun and the moon. And, uh, like in Uganda, they say the moon is fighting with the sun. They aren't fighting, they aren't anywhere near each other. They are far away from each other. They are not fighting, it's just in our, our minds. Although in my language we say that it is the second uh, darkness or getting even, the second evening. Uh, so at least I think for us we have a better one. So, because of the umbrella, then you are able to cover the sun completely. This is what will be viewed in the, uh, in the north, in the Pakwachi and the Gulu. But uh, in places, uh, in, at the Atlantic Ocean, as I will show you, it will be transiting from when the moon is still far away from the earth, it will cast a shadow which is not so strong, and then eventually have only a shadow in the center. Of the, of the sun, and then you have what we call a ring of fire. 
This is so, you know, nicely drawn, but actually the moon is not that linear. It has craters and mountains, so you won't have this nice ring. It is called annular because it is ring-like. That's why we call it an annular eclipse. And this is the ampla only stops around there. But if you if you project this line here and you project this other line, then you end up having the shadow of the moon as it covers this sun, only covering the center. So because of this year's eclipse, having both of these eclipses, if I may use that word, that means that's why we call it a hybrid eclipse. Because on the west coast of Africa, it will start by being annular. A short while it will become toro until when it comes uh, this side of uh, Papuachi, uh, Tugulu, and some parts of Tulkana. It happens to be toro, but the, the time it will spend being toro darkness keeps reducing until when evening invades. So the geometry uh, of the solar angle. Uh, nothing much really apart from the lines drawn there to give you uh, an impression of what I was talking about like if you were to uh, project the, uh, continue the lines up to this other side. So for the uh, solar eclipse you have your moon here. I'm looking at it from the top if I was God and I was to look at everything from the top. You'll be seeing the sun here. The moon will be here rotating around, or revolving around the earth. And then this is night. This is simply night because uh, if this was America, then the, the Africa, India, uh, China, ADC would be in darkness. Because if you got a ball and you, you put your torchlight on it, then the other side of the ball will be dark. So that's the first thing we need to appreciate that the ball, uh, I mean the, the moon, the earth are balls. So the annular eclipse, this is how it happens. The ampulla does not go straight to the uh, path where it is going, only that the projection of it is one which goes there, and then you have part of the uh, of the earth, I mean of the sorry, of the of the sun being covered, leaving the outside of it being uh, a ring of fire. This is geometry, which is not really uh, an issue uh, for this upcoming library eclipse. So this is the total eclipse image. So you have this whole light splashing off. Of course, this light is due to the fact that the moon on the other side is also reflecting some light. So when you, this, this here, this is the shadow of the moon. This is, we are looking at the moon after having covered the light, so we see darkness. But on the outskirts of the moon, we get this light coming from there. And these seemingly light lines are due to the fact that the moon is not a smooth ball, but it has craters. So at one point when it is being shadowed by the crater, you get this, and that's why you see on these sides, is a bit smooth because these kind of mountains and craters are more pronounced on the poles of the moon. So how does the total solar eclipse happen? The ampulla reaches exactly. For the, uh, the penumbra, you see the ampulla stopped here, but the kind of shadow, the secondary shadow after projecting these lines, is what we are going to see, and that shadow is the one which does not cover. It's because the uh, moon didn't cover completely due to the distance between the moon and the earth. So I, uh, this is uh, the penumbra means that the shadow is not so strong. The uh, ampulla is where you have the strongest shadow. But uh, to us now, for this uh, part of we are going to watch is not that mandatory to know all this. The path of the totality will be where this umbrella will always be cast. So as they are moving, as you saw them moving, 
those of you who are come late uh, for the benefit of, uh, of moving together, we started from this farm by understanding the relationship between the sun, the earth, and this small baby here called the moon. And I guess for this occasion uh, it is the problem, the whole problem, or the whole interest is being brought by the moon as it rotates around the earth. So as they rotate, the cast shadow will move, or the, the shadow cast will move at, on the part of the earth for some distance. Okay, so I move on to the presentation is more or less uh, graphical so that you don't have to read through texts and the like. I can explain and uh, I don't think you wanted to take any notes. This will be. So I've already said uh, the combination of these two which are happening for this uh, particular eclipse, they are the ones which are constituting what, why we call it a hybrid eclipse. These are the phases and uh, this is what uh, you are able to photograph being the total eclipse, the sun. This light here and this light here is what you are being warned about. Because at this phase here, you may be so interested, so you keep your eyes glued on the star and then it starts getting away and these bright lights can be as dangerous as possible. And then someone will say, but how about all the time we always see the sun? It's always the sun. The idea is that if I go the torch and I you know, shine, it on, shine it on you during the day, it does not become as irritating as if you were from sleep and then it is dark and then I shine the torch on you. And that's how then it goes. In, when you are in darkness, your pupil opens up to allow us more, uh, more light in your eye so that it can interpret the image around. So as the pupil is still wide open, to allow more light so that you understand what is going on, here comes this light. And then it can be so uh, problematic to your retina. And when your retina, when the uh, biology of your retina is spoiled, then you can no longer see anything. So what will you see here in Kampala? Uh, this, the phases will be, it will come and almost cover. If the internet allows, I'll be able to show you a graphic uh, representation of how the phases for you here in Kampala will be. And then you can also take away the uh, reference, which is an eclipse calculator which you can use at any time for any town or district uh, around. And this is uh, the phase of the total eclipse. So it will come cover, you can see even when it is just a graphical or an image, we will still have a problem, it is, it is shining in our eyes, even when it is just an image, it is already irritating to our eyes. So imagine when it is uh, up there in the sky. But I wouldn't care losing my eyes when I have seen something good. It take around 100 years happening again. So these are transitional phases. Uh, whereby I already said there are people in the land worship and why is Uganda high? Is because the Gabon, the, the, the Congo Brazzaville, the Democratic Republic of Congo, all that area is a rainforest area. So there's a lot of precipitation, hence a lot of cloud cover. So you, your chances of seeing this phenomenon around that place is so limited. That's why Uganda gets all uh, what an opportunity of being the vantage point for this view. <clears throat> and of course, Kapturwa was chosen because of that, uh, of the fact that the uh, tourist, uh, tourism amenities like Maxwell Falls and already accommodation and the like are already in place and the people there know how to treat tourists. Okay. So let's now see where this whole thing passes. I've been talking about the Bermuda Triangle, we're talking about the, uh, the Congo Brazzaville. This is the, these are the phases. So the people on the east coast of the United States, in New York, will be somewhere here. They will be able to see something if they woke up very early. 
but which will be lasting for a very short time. And then it comes growing up, transiting, until when you reach around this spot, where you get the transition from annular to total eclipse. The problem is you can't dock your ship on the, on the waters because of the problems I will explain in the coming slides. And of course, I've already explained why the whole stretch of the Congo, Gabon, Brazzaville, DRC are inevitable for viewing such an event because the rainforests are so dangerous. This is just a, a fair map to show you the, uh, the real map, and this is how it stretches. This is Goli. We have a much here. The town is almost on us, that's why they had to go to Owini primarily to go on this. The same line here is the one where the Ambla, the dark shadow, the total <coughs> eclipse will be taking place. The Gulu, <coughs> people in Gulu, and actually for Gulu, the Google Earth has already updated the imagery. So for journalists, I mean for tourists, they don't have to hustle. They just call Google Earth. <coughs> Google Maps <coughs> and get a good uh, imagery and see which hotel they can be, which playing field they can go to and set up their stuff for the photography and anything else. So let's see the path of the eclipse in a better form or in a better way. <coughs> We are having the, uh, these two maps, or these two boards or globes. Yeah, it shows a little bit of details, but the most important thing is to see where the total, I mean the, the transition from annular to total takes place. And uh, this board, which is going to come, this is actually the darkness of the evening. So this is early morning, so it is becoming as the shadow goes the other side and they will come back here in Somalia. So if you look at these numbers, these are the same road duration. The duration where totality will last. And uh, the, uh, this is the date, which is uh, for a cast date of Sunday. And this is the time, the UT, the universal time. Uh, you add three to get our time. <coughs> Okay, so by the time here, as you can see, changes depending on where this dot here, this small dot, as it is moving, this dot is the totality. So the time here changes as well. So when I was trying to talk, it was 15. When you add 3, you may end up uh, in 16, 17, 18, and then you say that you say 18. So the viewing starts from about 10 minutes past 4 up to evening, around 6. Because these things are not coming and jumping on each other and then shadowing and then going away. They are continuing their motion until when they cover you and then the motion continues and then it goes away and then we go to normal life until 101 years in the future. <coughs> if you happen to be there, maybe. I don't need them to be there. So this is the path. And uh, the way times will be changing, especially for the part which is, I think, the part which is uh, on our region. And it, as you can see, it narrows towards Somalia, but the narrowing is the amount of time it will spend when it is total darkness. So we got, uh, this is a little bit more detailed. I made sure that uh, the Congo is not included because it is not of interest. But when she has a town, is on the almost on the sides of the path, which is about uh, 50 kilometers for good viewing, but stretches up to 150 for nice viewing. But up to, if I can go back a little bit, you can see this big ball, this big shadow goes almost up to the South Africa. A little bit, the little part of South Africa, I don't know be in South Africa. And also this ball goes up to Italy and Spain, you'll be able to see something around here in the Mediterranean. And some part of, well, here it will be already evening, and that one will be wanting to go to bed. 
instead of viewing uh, this thing. So the Kotido, uh, Masinde, all these other districts which are there, which I may not know, all of them will be enjoying the field. The, the trick uh, to answer that question which may come in the new course, the trick of Pakwachi is because of the Maxwell Falls, the, the Nebi Rocks, ETC. It's political in a sense. But uh, those people, people who would have loved to be there and have good lodging facilities which are available in the vicinity, Gulu is still a nice place. The only hassle may be the weather. So it's all about the weather because once clouds come, you can't see nothing. So you will have, you know, wasted. So if you have to go and remove the cloud cover for that day and during that day, they won't ask for so much for only one hour of no clouds. Then you'll be able to do something there. I darkened the, uh, the map just to show the intensity of these main forests. But the map will be made right, but to show you how this other part of the uh, Congo Brazil is more dark because of the uh, rainforest around here. And uh, this uh, part here is a portion uh, where you get the hybrid transition from annular eclipse to total eclipse, which will stretch up to our place. Sorry. So far, you have an idea of when there is no eclipse, that is when we have a nice sun, not covered, which is an eclipse. We have uh, when this, the moon tries to cover the, the sun. I think in South Africa, in one of the cosmic uh, videos, they were saying that the, moon, the sun was trying to eat the moon. And then we now also know the annuality, where we get the ring of fire around uh, the moon, and then the total eclipse, which is uh, where you get the whole sun disk being covered by the moon, and you get darkness. Now, this photograph here was taken by a satellite, and as you can see, this is the Milky Way, and these are our clouds. So, for example, the astronauts who would be uh, on the International Space Station, I'm not sure where they will be by that time. I would, I would need to be interested. They can take some photos. But this was taken by a Russian, since there is no American here. This was taken by a Russian satellite, and it was able to take totality. If it wasn't for the strange happenings, which I will tell you, which may happen on that day, sometimes which are construed to be supersti uh, superstitious. One would have said, let me go in the plane and sort of hang in there and get a nice view. But it may be dangerous. <laughs> For the reasons I'll be able to tell you uh, ahead in the uh, presentation. <coughs> so why the craze? I've already said something of the sort. Why are we crazy about the eclipse? It is in the papers, it is on the radio, it is on the TV. Everyone is saying the eclipse, eclipse, eclipse. The craze is that uh, the last hybrid occurred 547 years ago. So none of the people who were living are still living, maybe in their fossil. And this was uh, on March 16, 1466. So the current one, which will be on Sunday, in case you are not yet informed, will be on the Sunday, November 3rd, 2013. And uh, you dare not miss it, because you never have something to tell your grandchildren. The next one will be after 101 years. That is on the Mother's Day. I don't know why. It coincided with the Mother's Day. And, but anyway, we shall not be there. Don't worry. To either enjoy it or prove it. It will be on the Mother's Day, 2114, or 2114. And uh, that's a point, I mean, that is a period we should be excited about uh, to see if we were to be alive. So that's why it is crazy. Every living astronaut, every living astronomer, every living scientist, every living person who is interested in nature won't be there to see this phenomenon again. 
the reason you should go to the north and take some photos of totality, that darkness may be so uh, anointing in your life. So this is just a simple uh, statistic, uh, numbers from the internet, uh, where you have all eclipses, you don't have a symbol for all eclipses combined, but uh, we have about uh, 11,000 and uh, the partial ones are about 4,200, annular ones are about 956, total ones are about 173, and the hybrid ones are about 506. 69. Probably, I don't know exactly when the first one would have happened. I've been interested in the one which happened previously next to this and which will happen next for the purpose of showing you why people are very crazy for a normal thing, which is a normal phenomenon, already known when it will happen, knowing how it will look like, and knowing even the effects of it. The strange part is why it comes from the Bermuda Triangle, some of you who know it in the movies, and then it's in the war-torn region Somalia. I don't want to go political or uh, social. So how are you supposed to view the eclipse? So I will, uh, I will give you the, uh, some... I had thought, I had contacted somebody when uh, people were at the media center, they were able to show some uh, some glasses, eclipse glasses. But I have these glasses which are from NASA, and these glasses are supposed to be seeing the sun life. So the sun life is not different from the one which is eclipsed. The sun will always produce uh, the same rays. The difference is that you are looking at a torch during the day, or you are looking at the torch during the night when you have just woken up. That's the only difference. You saw the sun when it was rotating, you were able to see, see it change. And uh, if you try to tilt it, uh, because I'm going to make it go around, you will be able to see that the sun is not just the light you see. There is a lot uh, to see. So you can pass it around for the purposes of uh, understanding uh, how this filters. But the eclipse glasses are really that they should be so dark. Although these are filters, they look bright and irritating, but they allow you to look at the sun without... If you try to look at the tubes around using them, you'll be able to see the tube outline without the shiny part. You can, uh, if you try to look at the tube, I just don't know whether this will change the view. Just for those of you are in front, you try to look at the tube, you really are able to see the outline of the two uh, without any... I hope you are still able to see the text. Uh, I hope the light is not... So what to use and not to use while viewing? So you should use internationally standardized uh, you know, gadgets and you can also have some locally made options. Now. Uh, the other ones, how to document your viewing experience is something that uh, you can have a viewer certificate, something that I'm trying to help people, but it will not be easy uh, for people who want to document their eclipse. You can pass it around. There are those who would want to show. You will not be there to tell you, you may not be there to tell your children, but if you have a certificate, and it is authentic, whereby it is signed by the person who should you what it is all about. Then you will be able to tell your children, hang it in your house and say, I saw it. And I have a question for having seen it. Of course, you can also have some photographs. Uh, you can take some photographs during the event, maybe stand and someone takes you in. And you are looking at it, and uh, that one would help you to have the, uh, the documentation. So you can take some video, anything that can. Uh, this is a historical event, so you take some uh, some historical backgrounds. So why do we have to be interested 
in how to view this eclipse? What, what, why should we be interested in looking at this eclipse? And uh, for why should we, should we be cautious? We have in physics what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, and which consists of the short wavelength and the long wavelength. The long wavelength is not so problematic, it's not dangerous. That's where we have broadcast band, the radio, the radars, the microwave, and the infrared. Infrared is the warmth we feel when we are out in the sun. So when you see people sunbathing, they are trying to enjoy the infrared. Now the other side is the ultraviolet, which is the ultraviolet, we have the ultraviolet A, B, C, but the ozone helps us to to filter out the dangerous one, which normally causes the uh, skin cancer and so on, skin burns. Then we have the gamma rays and then the cosmic rays, which are far in the terrestrial, in the, uh, in the uh, above, or let's say far atmosphere. So here, in, this is what is so important to us. I'm able to tell that uh, he's putting on a checked shirt because I, I can see the reflection from the white, from the red, because of the colors in the sunlight, which is the visible light, the one which we can see. I'm able to tell that he's in green because it is the green of this visible light which is being reflected. So, I... Uh, to give you an impression, I make sure that I, I take myself trying to view the eclipse. No, dreaming is not bad. <laughs> if you can have a chance to fulfill your dream at one point, dreaming wouldn't be a bad idea. So I dreamt that come Sunday I'll be able to see something phenomenal like this. But I have to use my glasses, those ones which have made you to look around. But for the benefit of doubt, some of you may say you have just tried to pause. And uh, <laughs> here we have the viewer who is really amazed by the phenomenon. And uh, he's also putting on eclipse shades and he's really enjoying it. So it's not something that you should just say, ah, if those things are going to fight, let them fight. Who cares? You should really try to make sure that you are able to tell. You may find your child becomes a scientist and say, but daddy, oh mommy, what is this all about eclipse? Then you said something in the sky. But uh, here it happened somehow when you were around. Say, so, yeah, it happened, but uh, then you, your son or daughter may not be really uh, serious. So, what happens during the viewing? Uh, or what are those things that may take place when you are viewing that may be a bit scary? It may feel very cold and you may start wanting to get something. I wouldn't mind because I think I'll always be in my court. <laughs> so I won't be affected. Because it, if it was to be a bright day and uh, there was light, you'd be warm. When this sun is shadowed, you may start being, feeling a bit cold. And when you start feeling cold, of course it is strange enough. Then you may find that uh, the light or shadow motion on the ground, imagine you are standing maybe at Makere, uh, somewhere, maybe Tank Hill, or you are, yes, food science. And then you see some dark thing moving in Kasubi. To the other side, one patch is bright, another patch is dark, and they are moving quickly. It's something which is terrifying uh, because of uh, that motion of the shadow on the ground. You may, you may be strong enough because you already know, but the kids who, who may not know exactly what is happening, may say, we are seeing something, the, the darkness is chasing the light, or the reverse, depending on which one is going where. Because when you shadow the sun, and you get a stretch of about 150 kilometers deprived of the infrared which is warm then the other stretch, of, uh, the other stretch is warm and that de deprived part which has been deprived, uh, deprived of, the, of the warmth becomes cold imagine for 20 seconds a, a, a thermometer is able to detect change in temperatures in less than a second 
if it is a good one. Imagine for all the 20 seconds it's been so cold. So the, the air around that place will be cold and dense. The air the other side is warm. So this air starts displacing the other warm air and then you get some winds. So you may be viewing and then you, you hear some streams of wind and you start getting scared. You say, ah, they told us they are fighting. They told us things are going to be strange. <laughs> so it, it's just a phenomenon which is geographical. There's nothing uh, superstitious about the sudden winds uh, of color. The cockroaches may want to go to eat because it has become dark. They want to go and look for what to eat. So nocturnal, the, the rats may start moving around the bush, wanting to go and and uh, find something to eat. So nocturnal animals may start looking for what to enjoy around. And you see the cockroaches going around and the bats can be dangerous. They can slap all of you with their wings. So those are other, that's something else which can be scared at that moment. And for us, who are the other animals, the cows, the chicken, for us we are always pretending to be superior that we predict when things are happening, we get to know in advance. But uh, like chicken, we want to go home and sleep. You see chicken going now to go and sleep. A young boy is looking after the goats, they straight away they head home. And then all of a sudden it becomes bright again. They start eating. So that strangeness alone, imagine in the whole world that is happening. It's strange enough to cause some superstitious thinking. The, the feeling of being in darkness alone. Imagine you were at Freedom Square, you haven't switched on the lights, and then darkness prevails. Or like at the Wind Primary School, where electricity may not be, the, the supply of electricity may not be all that instant. Yeah, in the town, maybe when it gets dark, you may see some street lights switching themselves on because of their light dependent resistors giving the switching on automatically. But you are in a place, it has become dark. You are not sure what is going to happen next. That's the strangeness that is felt. What to use for viewing? Approved eclipse glasses. I, I had called the, uh, someone thinking they would bring those glasses and maybe market them to you people, but I didn't get a response in time. You can use welding goggles. The light from the welding sparks is so bright more than that of the sun. So they can help um, for you at least to dedicate one minute of risking your eyes. In direct reflection of, uh, of, the, of the rays. In physics, we know that uh, when the rays come, I'm not sure whether I can get a piece of chalk and use the other side. We know very well that when we have a source of light, I didn't come with the chalk, but I will sound the piece. If this is the sun, or a light source for that matter, and we have a reflecting surface, when the rays come, assuming they are parallel, which they should be, then from simple physics, when we draw a normal, we should be able to get a ref the reflections. If this is smooth, like a mirror, then we should be able to get the reflections coming out linearly. So we are having the rays coming, reflected. So you shouldn't have your, assuming this is your water surface, so if it is not smooth and it is rugged, like water, because water cannot have a smooth surface. First of all, the winds will be blowing a bit, so you'll be having some waves on okay? So that means if that happens, each of the, uh, the rugged place where the ray is landing will be having its own normal. So I will draw a normal. So here I will draw a tangent. The tangent is drawing the line along a given curve. And then I draw a normal to this tangent. The light will go this way. If this one landed here, I will draw the normal around there. This one will go there. If it reaches here, I'm doing this because.
because the minister of the uh, health bluntly said, don't use water in the basin. The reflection from the water will kill your eyes. But according to physics, if I draw another one over here, this may go this uh, to this side. Meaning that you can't really get the intensity from the water as it came from the sun. The second thing is that the most dangerous one is the UV. So as you are viewing, some UV wants the water has land, I mean the rays have landed on the water surface. Some of them will be absorbed. When they are absorbed, so you will be just seeing the reflection. So I said that you shouldn't have your eyes or your eye should never be here. Because then you will be getting it. If that bomb is my, or that uh, tube is my son, if I now want to look at the reflection and I, I am here, I get a full dose, or let's say 90% or 80% of the dose. That means I can do it on the sides, because it is being reflected this way. So I can do it this side, or I can do it this other side. Because you don't expect uh, the, the light to be so brilliant or clever that I reach there, I want to destroy these guys. Eyes and then it is reflected this way. And then your basin should be a black one. I'm saying this because really we can't talk about the uh, glasses and we can't uh, have indoor cameras, all of us. So that was about the indirect uh, reflection. That's why I, that, that's what I mean by indirect reflection from the water. We don't follow the light from where it came from the sun and you say I want to see it properly. Still when you are this side you are able to see what you would have seen from this side. Projection on a big old camera, when you get a box and put in a small hole and on the other side you put a screen but which is any white surface, you are able to see the projection of the sun on that surface and then you are able to now see what is happening. Projection by the binoculars. I have the binoculars here, but unfortunately I may not have the uh, I may not have the light, the, uh, the sunlight. But let's see whether we can do some. This is too near. I just wanted to see whether we can have these are binoculars to see far away. So if you got these binoculars and you are so crazy that you want to see the sun, they will bring it near and they inspire the, uh, the light. I, you, I, there's no way I can put them, align them to this to show you. So you cover one part of it. If the sun is right outside, you will take advantage and those who are interested to view the sun, to view the binoculars. You cover one of the eyepieces, or I mean, of, because we call this one objective. This is where the sun is best. And our eyes are always here, so this is the eyepiece because it is near the eye. So you cover one part, and then let the sun go through here, and then you put a cardboard, like a, a white piece of uh, cardboard, and then you are just properly to get a good image of the sun. So you keep seeing what is happening. So when the moon comes, you see it from here. I would love to see it live, uh, instead of seeing the one which is here. But for, for the sake of protecting your eyes, then you can adjust it properly to make sure that you see and keep uh, track of the events. The other one is the telescope. And as you can see already, there is a caution that you shouldn't put the sun here and put your eye here to see. The sticker was put for help. There is someone who may say, I want to see that sun. It will uh, concentrate all the rays to your retina. Because by the time you want to see a nicer sun, all rays will be going to the retina for you to see it properly. And then you end up killing the, the, the molecules which form up uh, the retina. And then you will be, that's why they are saying blindness. Uh, there will be massive blindness. But I can share with you that if the sun was to be that dangerous, these people who have malicious actions against each other, either in the war, uh, torn area, they will get you and make you look at the sun and kill your eyes, like a whole beard, and make you cry. 
So in that moment, of, uh, looking at the sun may not keep your, your eyes as it's in the sun. So you add just to your, but for the moon, you can look at the moon through this one. And it is, it is nice. If you were able to pass by another time when you have a full moon, and you get to see it, you will be able to appreciate that this is a ball, it has some hills, some craters, and there is no vegetation on it. So you adjust it properly, after you can first look at like a tree, and then get a nice view, then you, you, you know, they have the alignments here, and then you cast a nice image. If by the time we almost in the middle there is some good light, you will be able to see the projection. So that's what I mean by projection by a telescope, not using a telescope to see, but put the projection on the platform and be able to see the image of the sun, the binoculars and then the people. The other one are the black cavea or an uninvolved black film, photographic film. Those also can work for your experience for viewing. So they were asking me if there are kids, young kids, what do you do? I told them, you know, since when you are crossing the road, you have to hold your kid to cross the road, then you should be so keen to make sure that you, uh, you are near your kid. If the phenomenon starts, you either you know, deprive your kid of the, of the opportunity or you make sure you have the gadgets for this kid. Otherwise, their retinas are not all involved like ours, and you may end up uh, bringing up a child who is sightless. What not to use? What should a new use? I've already explained a little bit of that. Do not use your arm. Do not feel so strong, and then you will say, me, I'm going to see by who go through. Yes, you may survive later, maybe if you eat a lot of cabbages and vegetables. But you may get some temporal uh, blindness there and then. If you are not, a, if you are not a good vegetarian, it may continue and be persistent. Do not use already developed films because the coating, the filter, has already been spoiled by exposure. So you will now be getting a full dose of of the light. Do not use direct reflection of water. I've already said it from that that when you are going to view, don't get the plane in which that line in which the sun is, uh, where the activity of fighting is happening, don't let it come direct to your eyes. Use the side of the basin and use, you can use a black basin to get a good reflection. Because if you use a white basin, it will be reflecting all the light from its sides into the water. Whether it is black, I mean uh, blue or red, still the color is a bit uh, destructive. So use a black basin, put in some clean water. Don't put in muddy water. You won't see any reflection. Or the one which is having a lot of particles in it. Those I normally see many ladies having these big shades which are like, I don't know. They are not good for viewing that phenomenon because they are not designed for filtering out uh, the UV. Do not use those uh, binoculars and then you focus, you want to focus them to get a nice view. You will end up focusing that nice view of those rays. You very well know that in, uh, in your second they use the magnifying glass to make fire to get some piece of paper and then you concentrate that. When, uh, when these light uh, rays become concentrated and make a pinpoint, you see some smoke coming out. That's what you would be doing. By the time you get a nice image, you are doing that spot on your retina. In other words, you are burning up your retina to never come back. The same applies to the telescope. So do not focus the telescope and that I'm about to get it. By the time you get it, you won't get it because you'll be already blind. So in a, in a nutshell, I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be showing you the Google Earth. Yes, it is a bit darkish. 
but this is just to show you that when the sunrise is the other side, this other side of the uh, earth is dark. So I'm going to try to see whether if I start the Google Earth program, I will be able to show you or for you to appreciate darkness and daylight. I hope it will be able to cooperate uh, in that regard. So in the meantime, uh, because the part left is more of uh, additional resources, you can, uh, I'm not the person who's supposed to say any questions, but let me first uh, prepare this demo. I need to have some internet. This is for the sake of you believing that first of all the earth is round. And uh, also believing that uh, when you uh, invoke the sun, or when the sun rises, it, uh, so this is the, this is today, which is the first of November, and this is actually now, 4 13 p.m. And when we try to adjust, I try to adjust uh, this. So in America, you see, in uh, North America, they are in darkness. But uh, the part of uh, South America, they are in, uh, this could be their, their morning, maybe 10 a.m. So this is now our Google Earth, whereby the sun is, uh, the sun is this side. I'll try to adjust it to show you the sun coming. And uh, these people are in the night because the half of this board is not seeing the light, is in darkness. Whereas the other part of the board is enjoying the... Uh, so when we have a half moon, this is what happens. The moon will be just reflected because the moon does not produce its own light. It only reflects the light from the sun. And that shows you that uh, the moon actually, if it had vegetation, like the, the, the earth, is not reflecting anything much now. Because this is the water body, and all this part is water, and this, uh, this, this should be the Amazon, this part here. So let's, let me take it to our place where we are now. And uh, so that is our Africa, which I was showing you showing you the Bermuda Triangle and the Congo rainforest. And as you can see, this is uh, the only thing that quickly shows you where you are. This is our Lake Victoria, and these are the parts which are our rainforests in the Congo uh, present, and uh, the Mongolic part of Congo. So because I'm now where the sun is shining, which is we here, this is the brightness. I, they had told me it will be up to five, that's why I was, uh, I was, but I'm almost done. I'm just showing uh, you just a little bit of demo. So this demo, I'm going to continue turning this uh, globe, and uh, at the time when you should be, if it was the moon, at the time of seeing the crescent, then you will be having the sun coming from the other side. So it will be to show that it will be shining from the other side. This is how and it is about to show up. I hope it won't run away into the other side. Yeah, the net, the, the, the software is not so strong, but you can see this is the, the sun. And if this was the moon, this is the present that we would be able to get. But is it true that uh, that's what we would be able to get? So in the meantime, when it is trying to come, I can allow just those burning questions and then I, I'll start from the left. Uh, thank you. My name is just a woman Yes. But, uh, 
So I should do I saw that. Okay. I saw that because Uganda was very tiny. The word Uganda couldn't fit in the tiny bit. That's why it wasn't put in there. But I will see how to make sure it features. I'll put a big dot to show this is Uganda. Yes, it was. I'm a bit worried about seeing it from the top of the presentation. It would be dangerous. People are going to get to be more than the enjoyment of the benefits. It's a great thing. Taking into account the specialty of this uh, occasion uh, and the tools which we should use to prevail, it seems that when people are going to endanger themselves, I don't know whether you of the writers have made provisions to equip people in those gardens so that they do not risk it. Seeing this, the person will make a crisis. Well, they poor people may not understand the benefits. They will just go, as you say, by the grace of the case. True. Uh, there is uh, some ray of hope. <clears throat> that there is a German astronomer who said they had, uh, you know, conversed for about 10,000 uh, pieces of eclipse glasses. This is for children. I may, if I'm lucky, I may be able to meet him today in the evening and then confirm or not confirm. But uh, let's be positive. Let's look at the positive part. And uh, the, the blindness, as I told you, if really the sun was that blinding, some people would use it as a weapon, but uh, I've never heard of that being used. Yes, sir. Uh, I will ask a 
of the Levant, uh, uh, for the time of being around, the sun gives light, and at night the moon also gives the light. Now, when these two lights meet, I expected more light. We <laughs> are talking about shadows and darkness and so on. That's the contradiction. Ah, that's the. I don't think it is a contradiction because if you if you had not come late, you would have uh, experienced what we were talking about on that issue. So before you came, we were able to appreciate. Uh, this phenomenon here, so on how the shining and the light, the one which you are worried about, the shining. So you are having this light, and this light is being reflected. So just focus on a small object, which is the moon. The time it is reflected, the, uh, the light from the sun, the sun is far away from us. We are not seeing it. But we are only seeing the moon which is bringing that light reflected. So there is no more light you can get because it is reflecting it when it is far away. But maybe you are now talking about when the coincidence happens. Now when the coincidence happens, it means that if you got two balls, the tennis ball and the football, and you make the tennis ball to be near your eyes to make sure that, of course, the nearer it comes, my finger now can cover everyone here. Because and my finger is very small, but because it is near the earth, it is able to cover big people who are far away. So when the moon covers the sun, then it is reflecting the light away from us. So we, it is more, but it is, we are not going to see it. It will be more, but away from us. So that's why it is not a contradiction. The moon has no light of the sun. No, no, it's oh. just a, it's a branch of uh, rocks and other pieces which people have always still uh, wondered until maybe when the next mission is by the Americans and the Russians to understand more. Uh, yes, but uh, about this affair. Yes, please. Could you explain how it is? Uh, it has to be the black.